my name is John and welcome back to the chaos that is Shawnee and Books. I am going to do my first book haul of 2023 today, but I just wanted to say thank you to everyone new who has subscribed. There have been a fair few new people, so I'm sorry to those people because I also haven't uploaded in a couple of weeks. I had some family commitments and then I had some family visiting and then Kian got sick and it's been it's been a wild month. So probably all of those people are going to see this pop up in their subscription box and be like, who's this? So I apologize, but thank you to anyone who is new. We are quickly approaching 1K, which is crazy to think about. But yeah, I really appreciate everyone who has pressed subscribe and wanted to see me talk about books. So let's talk about some books. Um, like I said, this is my first book haul of the year, but I also haven't done one since like, I don't know, it feels like it was like September or October of last year so it's definitely a collective book haul some of the books were gifts the Christmas gifts and then yeah a few are from this year and then there are a few that I purchased at the end of last year myself that I'll talk about because I haven't spoken about it yet I think all of the books that I purchased this year so far besides one have been used copies which is amazing Hang on, Kian's calling. Okay, I haven't even started the video and we've had the oh. first interruption, which is on brand for me. But let's start with gifts. First up, the lovely Sasha from Sash Reads gifted me Horrid by Katrina Leno for Christmas. So thank you so much, Sasha. Um, this one was Jan's book club pick for December. Uh, and, yeah. I did, and I did read it in December, but then I missed the live show, so. I did. Mama. Hi. Bye. 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 But this one is a young adult horror, I think, where this girl moves into her grandmother's house with her mother and it's creepy. I don't know. Do you want to hear synopsises for all the books? Because I don't know. Okay, next up, I'm going to show you a box set. Although the box is gone because Kim took them out of the box and they're never coming back in the box. And when I hold this up, you're going to think, Charlie, you're never going to read those books. But I actually think that I am. My mum bought me this for Christmas. Usually I give her like a list of books that I would be interested in for her to go off if she wants to buy me um, books for Christmas. I didn't give her that this year and she picked this herself which is clearly because she doesn't really know that many books, but it's just cute that she got it for me herself. So I am actually going to attempt to read these at some point in my life. But I feel like as a reader, you kind of just have to own the Lord of the Rings books. I feel like of all of them, The Hobbit is maybe going to be the easiest for me. Um, but yeah, I have the set of the Lord of the Rings books now. Who knows how long it's going to take for me to actually read it. But I have it now. Thanks, Mum. I actually think it's cute that she was like, okay, Shani doesn't have a list of books. I'll just think of a book that I know of and I'll get her that. It's really sweet. And I like these editions. I feel like the landscapes are just cute editions. But yes, I feel like a real reader now because I'm going to have this <laughs> book set on my shelves. Not that you're not a real reader if you don't. It's, that was a joke, guys. Another set of books that I got for Christmas to finish off my collection of this series is the rest of the Death Note Black Edition volumes. The first ones are, where are they? Just there. I only have volumes one and two and I never continued on. But obviously now I have the full set because I think there is only six of the Black Editions total. I'll have to reread the first two to continue on. But this is a horror manga series where there is this book called The Death Note and when you write people's names in it they die. So yeah very excited to reread the first two and then continue on. What should I do now? Continue on with gifts? I don't know. I guess keeping on the graphic novel and manga theme. Um, this one I bought myself but it is Saga Volume 10 which is the most recent volume to come out. They took a hiatus for a few years and then finally they came up with this one. I got the bind ups of the first nine series for my birthday and obviously the 10th one came out like in October maybe, I don't know, September. So I went down to my local comic book store and picked it up. 
I actually wasn't planning on getting this, but I was buying some manga for my brother for Christmas and I saw it in there and yeah, I have already read this one and yeah, I'm very excited to be up to date with the series now and to be able to read things as they come out because I think it's still ongoing. Oh, and this, I, I don't think you need me to tell you what things are is a sci-fi graphic novel series but yeah it's a sci-fi and i absolutely loved it i kind of feel like rereading the whole series already but um what else can we do more gifts um some that i've already read so i read the roughest draft pretty much right after it came into my collection this one is a romance book about two authors who wrote a book together and then they stopped speaking to each other and now they have to write another book together and obviously it's a romance so i guess you can imagine what's happening in this this will be in a vlog soon i think i don't know i'm working on like a bunch of vlogs and who knows how long it's going to take me to finish them and get them out but i did read this one also one it was in my february tbr and i just finished it so legends and lattes by travis baldry and this one is a cozy fantasy that everyone has been talking about like I said, I did just finish it and it will be in a vlog as well, I think. But this one is about an orc. Is she an orc? The orc barbarian, yes. Um, she's finally hanging up her sword for good and she is opening up a coffee shop uh, in a place where they don't really know what coffee is. So she's opening up the coffee shop and introducing the people, well not people, the residents of the area to coffee. Speaking of coffee, <laughs> the next book is Before the Coffee Gets Cold, which is this like short stories. Yeah, there's four stories in this. And I think this is why I haven't read, but I think this one is about a coffee shop where you can time travel from a specific place in the coffee shop, but you just have to be back before your coffee gets cold. I think that is the premise, um, but I have heard that this one is sad. It's also very, very popular. So I'm very excited to get to this one. Next up, an author that I haven't had the best luck with in the past, but it is very by Colleen Hoover. I haven't loved Colleen Hoover's books. This is a different vibe, a different genre to what a lot of her romance books are. I use romance in quotations because some of them I don't think should be classed as romance. But anyway, this one I think is more like a thriller um, book. Maybe I'll like this one. We will see. I'll probably read this one fairly soon, but yeah, we'll see. Next up, one I am very excited about, The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. I've loved the books that I have picked up from this author and I have one on my TBR that I should be reading in the next week or so. Um, this one I think is like a retelling of Carrie, but with a black main character, which has me very excited. I don't know when I'm going to get to this because I actually haven't read Carrie, like I know the story, but I haven't actually read it. And I do like to know the origin story before I read retellings. Um, but I don't know, maybe I'll just jump straight into this one without reading Carrie. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see what happens. But it's Tiffany D. Jackson, so I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it. Next up, another. We have another popular one, Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. This one I think is classed as horror. And I believe it is about these two wives and one of them had gone on like a submarine mission or something like that and they were gone for like way longer than they were supposed to i think it was like they thought it was missing the submarine i'm not really sure but i think what happens is the wife comes back and she's like really different to before so i think that's where the horror aspect comes in yeah a deep sea mission that ended in catastrophe it soon becomes clear though that lee may have come back wrong i could be wrong but i feel like this one is a horror book i think so lots of horror books that i i don't usually pick up that genre that often but i've heard really great things about this one so i'm very excited to get to it i'm hopefully going to get to it very soon another horror book this one i have read though i just didn't own a copy and i got gifted the new cover of a bunny by mona awad this is again one that i feel like everyone has heard about like i said i didn't own a physical copy because i read an ebook copy was it uh oh uh oh what is this? Uh, don't knock over my pile of books oh you are you helping me stack what's this oh, the amount that i get interrupted 
Um, where was I? I think I was talking about the bunny, which they recently came out with this new pink paperback. And I think Lee got it as a gift. It is like a weird horror book with like weird bunny cult at a university and it was a really fun ride i am really interested to reread it uh, hence why i had it on my wish list even though i've read it because i feel like going back and rereading it now that i know what happens would be fun switching gears from the horror books i have a non-fiction book this is the uncaged sky and i haven't heard anything about this but i was given it as a gift and it is about this australian woman um, who was arrested at Tehran airport um, and so then she was in prison for 804 days oh yeah my 804 days in an Iranian prison so yeah I had not heard of this but I'm very interested to give it a try and I always oh look at the inside inside what's it called like end page she served two years of a 10 year sentence She's an Australian, Australia-based scholar of Islam and the Middle East. She speaks several Middle Eastern languages and has spent significant periods traveling and conducting academic research in the region. In 2018, she was detained during a trip to Iran and served more than two years. Wow. So I think this will be a very interesting of a read. I don't think I've ever read a book set in a prison in Iran. Have I read many books that have been set in prison at all? Not really. But I've watched quite a few documentaries on prisons around the world plus tv shows i mean everyone's seen orange is the new black so i am interested in what it's like in a prison because the fun thing with reading is we get to experience things that we're probably never going to experience and i don't see myself going to prison i mean i can't predict the future but don't plan on committing any crimes so and i'm not a big traveler so i don't think i'm ever going to end up in a prison in Iran. So yeah, always keen for another non-fiction on my shelf. Now I think we're moving into books that I have bought. Wow, that's actually a big stack of gifts. I know Christmas was in there, but um, I would say thank you, but most of those are from family that are not gonna watch my YouTube videos. So let's do a couple of the books that I bought at the end of last year that I just haven't posted a haul since then. So they haven't been here. I've read a couple of these. Let's start with those, I guess. Nightcrawling by Layla Motley. I'm just realizing this neon pink is a theme. Um, but this one I picked up on a whim because at Kmart it was, I think, like half price. So this must have been like $8 for a brand new paperback. And honestly, I hadn't heard anything about this. I did see that it was nominated for I think the Booker Prize, but I hadn't heard a single thing about it. But the cover was bright, so it drew my eye and it was on sale. So I picked it up and it ended up in my favorite of the year. This is about this young girl who is just trying to make money to keep her family afloat and ends up stumbling into doing sex work. And then she gets involved in like this police conspiracy crime thing that's going on. Um, yeah, and she's at the center of a media storm and a trial and this made me sob <laughs> but I honestly feel like I barely ever see anyone talking about it but I enjoyed it so you know there you go sometimes you know you just see a book and have a good feeling about it and pick it up and there you go another book that was marked down at Kmart which will be in a reading vlog I think um, not as much success with this one as with Nightcrawling, but I picked up Family of Lies by E. Lockhart. This one is the prequel to We Were Liars, which I read by this author years ago. But this one was at Kmart and it was $2.50 for a brand new copy. Like you can't even get a book for $2.50 at the used bookstore half the time. So for a brand new copy, I was like, I will read it eventually. And I have already read it this year. And like I said, I didn't have as much success with this um, random purchase in the other one but thankfully it was only $2.50 although what I will say is I should have seen it marked down that significantly to $2.50 and think why is it marked down so much but I am glad to have read it am I glad I don't know also marked down at Kmart um, as you can see I'm a bit of a bargain hunter and I like to look at the books that are marked down but Something Wilder by Christina Lauren, which I have read The Unhoneymooners by this author duo and something else. I can't remember what it was called. I don't know if this is a romance because usually they write romance. But to be honest, I actually have no idea what this one is about. But I had read from this author before and it was cheap. I actually don't own a copy of The Unhoneymooners, funnily enough. Maybe I'll see that marked down at some point in my life. I don't know. 
I remember enjoying it, but I did read it a fair few years ago. Um, so I'll be interested to read from this author again and see if I like them. And then the reason that I went to Kmart on the trip that I bought all those Markdown books was for a new release book, which was I'm Glad My Mum Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This one I have already read. This is her memoir. I, you don't need me to tell you what this is about because everyone has been speaking about it. But Jeanette was a Nickelodeon star. I feel like I was like just like on the older side of like their target demographic when iCarly was on TV. Maybe I fit into the age group. However, I didn't have um, like pay TV as a kid. So did iCarly come on Saturdays on whatever that Saturday program was? I don't know. I was thinking about this the other day. Isn't it so weird that when you're younger, you had to wait for like a specific time for a TV show to come on? Like on Saturdays, the shows played in a certain order and you knew exactly what time a certain TV show was going to be on. So if it was your favorite, you had to wait until that time. And if your mom was like, oh, we're going to do this. It's like, no, like Hannah Montana is on at that time only. And it's so weird to think about like kids, this new generation of kids can have any TV show at the click of their fingers with Netflix, YouTube. Like if they want to watch something, they can watch it. Whereas like you had to own the DVD if you were going to be able to do that like back in the day or else you had to look in the TV guide and find the time that something was going to come on. Isn't that weird? Anyway, that has nothing to do with this book um, apart from the fact that I didn't watch iCarly that much. But I was still interested to hear Jeanette McCurdy's story. As everyone has said, this is an incredibly eye-opening read to the life of a child star. Hi, baby. Hi. Okay, I'm getting interrupted again. Okay, I may as well finish off my Kmart bargain hunting section of this video. This is my most recent purchase, my only one that I've purchased in February, I think. Um, but I found this, again, half price in Kmart. This one is Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. I have, what is that other book she wrote? Little Fires Everywhere. I have that one still to read. I know it's super popular and I think it got turned into a TV show. Um, but I picked up her newest book because it was on sale. I suspect they're coming out with the smaller... Uh, paperback versions of this and that's why it got marked down but it was cheap and I will read this one hopefully soon it is in a genre that I do normally read because I feel like this is like general fiction or literary fiction right okay next up some of my used book bargains that I've found I must have had this in my February TBR did I read this this month I think I did <laughs> all the months are blurring together already it's only the second month uh, the stationery shop of Tehran which has a really cool cover. This one is a historical fiction book, which is set in Iran, where this young girl in a stationery shop falls in love with a young boy. They end up being separated and we follow them. We follow her mostly throughout her life until she is elderly and still wondering what happened and why the boy didn't meet up with her where they were supposed to meet up originally all those years ago in Iran and I thought this was really good. This isn't a wrap up, but I'm just telling you about the book. Also, this is like the most floppy book that I own, which is always a good time. The next couple of used books I haven't read. Well, first let's start with this one because I started it last night before bed. I noticed a lot of the books I was reading were sad or dark. So I picked up this one last night before bed, Ms. I Sandwich, which this is the author that wrote Breasts and Eggs. And I think this is translated. It's really short and it is about a young boy who's obsessed with this lady at a supermarket, is it? Yeah, supermarket or oh, a sandwich counter and is entranced by her beauty and the bright blue eyeshadow that she wears. I only read 22 pages last night. I just wanted something nice before bed. So I'll probably finish this off tonight before I go to sleep. But yes, I found this one used this month as well. Another short used book I bought. These books will all be in a reading vlog coming soon-ish. I don't know. I have a couple coming out soon. I'm reading all the books, but I'm reading them all out of order and then like joining all the different clips together. So I don't know how long it's going to take me. But anyway, I also picked up this super short book called Hex which I think this is like about witches. It's the 4th of December in 1591. Um, so it's about how women were treated and I think how they're like, women were like killed if they were accused of being a witch. 
I think. I don't know. I'm going to read this probably this month and I'll let you know what it actually is about. But it's got a nice bright blue colour. Next up, this one's also fairly short. I think I'm probably going to read this one this month as well if I can fit it in. This one is Milk Blood Heat. And this is short stories. So I think it's going to be sad as well because there seems to be a lot of sad um, sad things happening in the inside flap. But I had this one planned for a reading vlog and then I found a used copy from Book Grocer is the one I got this one from. I think if anyone's curious, they are a used bookstore in Australia. I think they have new books as well. I don't know. But I found this one on there. So picked that one up. Also picked up one that's not short. This one is quite long for me, at least. And this one is called The Five Wounds, which is quite a chunker. And this is a stiff paperback. I got this one on Book Grocer as well, which it says it's a used copy, but I'm assuming like they just have the copy as marked down because it has like a few little dints in it because it is a stiff paperback so it definitely has not been read before. I'm honestly excited to see what this looks like at the end once I have read it but I'll probably be reading this one again in the next month to finish off a reading vlog. But yeah I think this is about like a couple of generations in a family. Probably also going to be sad. I, I pick up a lot of sad books. I think I need to start picking up some happy books. The one new book that I bought myself is How High We Go in the Dark, which I have heard a lot of people raving about. I'll hopefully read this one soon as well. If you couldn't tell, the books that I was buying were all for a specific reason. So I'm going to read this one hopefully soon and see if I do enjoy it. How High We Go in the Dark follows a cast of intricately linked characters spanning hundreds of years as humanity endeavors to restore the delicate balance of the world. This is a story of unshakable hope that crosses literary lines to give us a world rebuilding itself through an endless capacity for love, resilience, and reinvention. Interesting. Again, I will let you know what I think of it once I have finished reading it, which is not now. And then the last stack of books I have are from last year. And these are just the book of the month books that I had not spoken about, which I was planning on canceling my subscription in 2023 because the shipping has gotten more expensive. Originally, I have grandparents in America and my original plan was to have it shipped to their house and then get them to send over. But then I felt bad. Um, they weren't really leaving because of COVID as well because they are my grandparents. So they're obviously elderly and you know, we're just trying to be safe and not leave the house. So I didn't ask them and I got it shipped over with a shipping service, which originally it wasn't that expensive, but the prices have gone up. So I'm not going to be continuing that this year. Um, it was fun while it lasted, like the anticipation of what the monthly books are going to be and then getting to pick which ones with the monthly books. It really got me like it was a good, a good idea. Um, and if it could get shipped straight to me, then I would probably continue it. But having it shipped over, they just upped the prices in the last couple of months. I have to order like one because I accidentally forgot to cancel and they charged me for it. So after that, I won't be purchasing it again. But at the end of 2022, I got the book Someday Maybe, which I think again is a sad one. Um, a wife whose husband, I believe, dies. Oh, yep, on New Year's Eve, he killed himself. Oh, and she's the one that finds him. Okay, so this is going to be sad. I also have one that I've already read, which is Spells for Forgetting. I read this for the Weryl Book to Book Club and surprisingly enjoyed it. I wouldn't have picked it up on my own for anything else. I haven't read from this author before. I feel like they wrote young adult books before, right? And then this one is adult, but this one is classed as fantasy on the back and it has like a little bit of a mystery in it. And yeah, I wouldn't have picked it up on my own, but I'm glad I picked it up for the book club because I surprisingly enjoyed this. It's like on an island where years ago this death happened and now wait what was it about yes her best friend was found dead okay right that's right and the love of her life was accused of murdering her and then he disappeared from the island and now things are happening and we're finding out yeah what happened all those years ago which yeah it's good to pick up outside your comfort zone every now and again one that I picked up out of my comfort zone that I didn't love is small angels I didn't actually finish this idea and after it I was like 50 pages in and I wasn't completely vibing it. This one I was reading for Jan's book club. I thought I was going to like this, but yeah, it was 
the end of the year and I wasn't gonna put myself into a reading slump by reading something that I wasn't totally enjoying. And then I have The Hacienda, which this one is a horror. I think it's been compared to like Mexican Gothic. Mexican Gothic meets Rebecca in this debut supernatural suspense novel. Set in the aftermath of the Mexican War of Independence about a remote house, a sinister haunting and the woman pulled into their clutches. I feel like I've seen good reviews for this one, so I am interested to get to it. I did like Mexican Gothic, so. Um, yes, I'll be getting into this one at some point. And then two books that I have read before, and I own different editions of these books, but I bought them for a reason. Who knows if that video is ever going to make its way to the internet, but I have The Invisible Life of Annie LaRue, which I have a copy somewhere that you can maybe see there. Wait, where the heck is it? Oh, just there. I have the paperback copy, so I, I have the US cover now as well as the US cover for Frederick Buckman's Anxious People. Both of these books were on my favourites of 2021, right? Yeah, uh, both of these books were and I have the Australian covers for both. So now I have the US copies for a reason that I may explain one day or I may not. But that is all the books for my book haul. This is quite the stack, quite the two stacks. You can't see them, but it's quite large. Um, so yes, thank you so much for watching. Let me know which of these books you have read and would recommend me pick up first and prioritize above others. Like I said, some of them I will be reading soon anyway. Thank you to everyone who gifted me a book. Sasha is probably the only one of those people who is actually watching this. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed recently. I feel nervous posting now that there are more eyes that this can fall onto in the subscription boxes. But I do really, really appreciate you being here. And I'll hopefully be posting consistently if I have no more family commitments and sick mm -hmm. children. So I appreciate you so, so much. Thank you for being here for this book haul. Hi. I'm about to be interrupted. So I'll see you next time. Yeah.